this month is Women's History Month. And as we begin the month of March, we're celebrating Women's History Month and honoring the women in our county and our nation for their invaluable contributions and selfless service to others. It's also a moment to remember the importance of protecting women's reproductive rights. Opponents to women's reproductive rights are succeeding in states such as Texas and Mississippi, and the Supreme Court could issue a ruling this year overturning Roe versus Wade, which gives a woman the right to a safe legal abortion. Why is this important for us here in Montgomery County? Delegate Ariana Kelly, who represents parts of our county in District 16, says even in Maryland, considered a safe state for abortion access, we do not have sufficient abortion access. And I've talked to a clinic provider before. Um, they work sometimes under fear and harassment. We've seen examples around the country of you know, both killings and fire bombings of clinics, um, all because they're trying to provide a woman with safe access to something that she has a right to. This idea that a small group of men continue to insist on their ability to tell a woman what to do with her body is shameful. And uh, hopefully at some point, we'll move past that too. More than two thirds of Maryland counties do not have an abortion provider forcing many women to other parts of the state or even out of state for safe abortion care. Delegate Kelly is sponsoring the abortion care access package of bills to protect abortion access and ensure equal abortion access regardless of income. Delegate Kelly is here with us today as we start the beginning of Women's History Month and we'll be talking about how we can protect women's reproductive rights. So first I'll turn it over to Delegate Kelly who has to leave at 1.15 and then we'll resume the rest of the COVID part of the briefing. Thank you. Thank you so much um, to the County Executive for, for having me here to talk to you about this today and for his stalwart support um, of abortion access in, in Maryland. Um, I'm gonna speak briefly because I do have committee hearings starting, um, but I just wanted to make sure we set the context. This is Women's History Month. Um, you probably remember if you were around like I was back in 1992, we had a statewide referendum codifying uh, the principles of Roe versus Wade in Maryland law. Um, the interesting thing is that since 1992, we have done nothing since. We haven't moved forward um, with healthcare policy around abortion at all. There's been no, no uh, legislation at the state level. Um, but the world has significantly changed, and the way that we deliver healthcare has really changed. So we have the abortion care access package of bills this year in Maryland. Finally, after, after 30 years, we're going to be moving forward. Um, so I have House Bill 937 and 952. They're cross-filed in the Senate by Finance Committee Chairman Dolores Kelly. Um, there's also House Bill 1171, which is sponsored by Speaker Adrian Jones. And these three pieces of legislation work together to address the challenge that the county executive just raised. Um, two out of three counties in Maryland do not have abortion providers. Our number of abortion providers have been dropping since that statewide referendum in 1992. We, they've dropped by 15% while the population has gone up by more than 25%. So already you have a huge imbalance there. In addition, there are increasing barriers to clinical training for abortion providers, both in the state of Maryland and also very importantly for those uh, practitioners who are trained out of state. If you are trained as a physician in Texas uh, or Mississippi, uh, you are not getting access to abortion training. So if you move to Maryland and you wanna work here, you, you haven't had the clinical training you need. So that's an issue that needs to be addressed one of the things that we know is that after the Texas abortion ban or near abortion ban went into place, the neighboring states started seeing increases in their wait times for apport appointments from 19 to 22 days. So people in uh, Oklahoma and Louisiana now have to wait almost an extra month to receive abortion care um, because of the pressure from, from Texas. And we're expecting the same thing to happen here in Maryland. When the Dobbs case comes down, which is probably gonna be June, maybe May or April, uh, from the Supreme Court, if they do what is predicted and severely limit or perhaps overturn Roe versus Wade, 26 states could ban or severely restrict abortion. That's going to have a tremendous uh, impact on our ability to provide uh, access to care here in the state of Maryland. So the abortion care access bills do four really important things, and the county executive touched on them a bit. Um, the first thing that they do is increase the number of qualified clinicians who can provide abortion care. We have this restriction in our law from back in 1992 that's called physician only language it says you have to be a physician to provide abortion care. 
Um, however, healthcare has changed a lot in the last 30 years and nurse practitioners and nurse midwives and physician's assistants are all able to provide abortion care. There's consensus within the medical community that that's appropriate care for them to be providing. Um, we have 14 other states already that allow uh, these advanced practice clinicians to provide this care. We want Maryland to join that list of states. We're also hopefully going to be making an investment in clinical training so that clinicians who are trained in states that um, are not supportive of abortion access will be able to get the training they need to provide care here in Maryland. In terms of financial barriers to care, the legislation does two really important things. Number one is for those folks who have private insurance. It requires that private insurance cover abortion care with no cost sharing. That means no deductibles. Deductibles are one of those things that can delay care and that can make care much more costly, difficult, um, and um, complicated. So we definitely want to remove that financial barrier. But the other thing that is incredibly important is that we're going to equalize Medicaid. Medicaid in Maryland has covered abortion care since 1979. But for people who are in Medicaid, that is subject to budget debate every year. And that's just wrong. Um, we shouldn't have a world where some people's rights are in statute and permanent and other people's are subject to debate every year. Um, so we're gonna make sure that Maryland Medicaid is permanently covering abortion care, just like private insurance with no cost sharing. So those are major provisions of the abortion care access bill and they work in tandem with the speaker's bill, which is the constitutional amendment that would be another referendum similar to what we did in 1992, but this would elevate those protections to constitutionally protected, making it um, much, much more difficult for those rights to be rolled back uh, in the state of Maryland. So that's, that's the approach we're taking. Um, we have already had very good hearings on the bills and we are expecting a committee vote on Friday in the House Health and Government Operations Committee uh, on this package of legislation. Um, so I think I think that was my three minutes, but I really thank the county executive um, and the team for their um, op the opportunity to share this information with you today and uh, in acknowledgement of Women's History Month.